I have many questions to ask you about Athens, about Athens history. What might your name be? Paul Stratton. Nice to meet you. Glad to see you. What was your occupation? Next man at Perry's Ice Cream. <laughs> what was that like? That was the beginning of the ice cream, where they put the milk, and the cream, and the powders, and stabilizers, and emulsifiers, and all that, and assemble it all, cook it, pasteurize it, and pump it to the freezer room. Did you go to a one-room schoolhouse, and what was that no, like? No, I went to Akron all of my life, all the way through, and then the red brick schoolhouse down on the corner of John and Church Street. That's where I started. Did one year in the library. When I started, they went two years to kindergarten. One year in the morning, one in the afternoon. <laughs> Can you tell me any more about all of the schools you went to? Uh, well, I just went to that school. And then from that school, I went, to, I went through sixth grade there, and then went up here on Bloomingdale to the old section. And that's how little school it was then. <laughs> what do you think about Akron School District now? Oh, I'm lost. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> what kind of schools did you attend besides Akron schools? What kind of schools what? What kind of schools? Can you tell me all the schools that you went to or attended? Time out. Time out. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I told you. <laughs> I went here all my life here. Let's, see? let's let's start the whole interview right from scratch again. Look at your notes again. Let's we'll start from the beginning again. Let's start again. So now you know he went to just to Akron Central School. Okay. So you have to ask him, ask him more about Perry's, ask him more about uh, ask where, him a where lot you about lived. The schoolhouse down on the corner. Where you lived in Akron. Was he on a farm? No. No. <laughs> okay. I was born and brought up at 14 Marshall. That's good. Well, we'll ask, ask you that ask on about, tape. Ask him about his family. But definitely ask him a lot about that schoolhouse on the corner of John Street and Main. Oh. John Street and um, Church. It's the one that's now the town hall, right? Yeah, where well, the town hall is. Okay, so we would like to know as much as we can learn about that, too. Oh. We don't have anyone yet who's contributed about that. You had a long weekend, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Okay, you ready to go again? Yeah. All right, we're going to start again, Mr. Stratton. Okay. Okay, start it all from scratch. Yeah. That's it. Bring them on in. Me a favor, plug them right into that headset there. The first plug. And Ashley got to talk nice go. and loud. Mr. Stratton has yeah. been hearing. Okay. Real loud. So I know we're doing editing here. So you ready? Hand comes down. You start. Hi, my name is Ashley Brene. I'd like to welcome you to Akron's local history club. We can stop recording any time if you have to cough or just want to pause it. I have many questions to ask you about Akron. What might your name be? Paul Stratton. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Good to see you. What was your occupation? I was the mix department at Perry's Ice Cream at the time. <laughs> the one man job. But and that's where the ice cream started. The raw milk, cream, powders, emulsifiers, stabilizers. Or, and when you only made two, you made a white and chocolate with And you cooked it there, you pasteurized it there. The tanks, that the last ones I had were 640 gallons that they would hold, and that would make over 1,200 gallons of ice cream. Because you make two to one. 
If you didn't have that two to one, you wouldn't eat the ice cream because there's no air in it, see. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't taste too good. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed it. It was a real good place to work. I worked several places before that, but worked Buffalo Arms twice, two different plants. Oh, I was five years up in the park. In a county park. That's when it was hard to, hard at times to get a job. So you took what you could get. Then I retired from Perry's. How long did you work at Perry's? Twenty-five years. Retired. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's been, you see, I retired in 79, so you see how long I've, I'd put it in many years of retirement as I have working down there. <laughs> yeah. And then, as far as schooling is concerned, I started in school into the old brick schoolhouse, the corner of John and Church Street, where the town hall is now. And my kindergarten teacher was May Handy. And part way through, she got married to Irving Brucker, so my mother told me, no, that's not Miss Handy anymore, that's Mrs. Brucker. <laughs> I, I don't know how, well, they've been gone a long time. He was a World War I vet, so you can see how long they has been gone. But uh, once through there, you go to, to sixth grade. And then from sixth grade, we came up on Bloomingdale and built a school. And, then I, and I got going good in, in October. I got typhoid fever when they had the epidemic. And I didn't get to school again until after February. But they crammed it into us, and we went. <laughs> we got through. <laughs> and Half a minute. So. Okay, stop. Ashley, I'm going to help you out here because I know something that you are too young to know. Ask Mr. Stratton when he went to the school, the Little Brick Schoolhouse. Ask him about did they take pictures down at the park fountain? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can we, can you elaborate and tell her a story about that when she asked you that question, Mr. Stratton? Hold on. Can you Ask him if they took pictures at the park fountain. This is still about schools, Jim. That's why I wanted to stop so okay. we don't have to edit so much later. Do you take pictures? It, did they take their class pictures at the park fountain? No, oh, not if mine. Not, not mine. I never had one down there. Ours was right up by the school. Okay, I got one on, we were, must have been in, oh, first grade. The convention will be held in room 205. Fifth grade, they had The convention will be held in room 205. You did go down to the park fountain for recess, though, right? Oh, yeah, it was on in the summertime. Okay, I'd <laughs> like you to talk a little bit about that. Well, <coughs> actually, I'll ask you one second. Okay, Ash. Don't look at me. Watch me with the camera, just watch the side. Uh, you ready? You <laughs> Did you take your school pictures at the park fountain? No, I didn't. But I have seen pictures that they had taken there. Mine was taken right up against the old school. But we used to play around that fountain a lot. There was little nymphs around it, and then King Neptune in the middle. We used to jump from one to the other. You get on there, of course, but most of the time we got wet feet and that's it. <laughs> but, but that, and then we used to play all baseball in the park. Mr. Sherwood used to furnish the baseball and the bat. <laughs> we played it in there as kids. And but with that old school, there were several classrooms. It wasn't the one-room schoolhouse. There was 
pretty well through six grades up through eighth grade it went in that one building and there was a lot of rooms in it every morning in sixth seventh and eighth grades that they had an, like an assembly and they did the, a prayer and sang songs and then you went to school and mr madison I don't know if you remember Harold Madison. I know you don't, but Nancy might. <laughs> His father was a principal. He was tough. Oh, man, he was tough. He, 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 a little uh, woodshed psychology worked good with him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what that means. If you didn't behave, you got a swat inside the head. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was said. If you go home to talk to your parents about it, you got another one. You shouldn't have screwed up in the first place. <laughs> so, so see how you kids are getting easy? <laughs> it didn't hurt any of us either. <laughs> and, uh, but you used to uh, change rooms after in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. You, had to, you went for a different teacher, you went to a different room, see? And before that, one teacher did it all. Oh, and another thing, there was a teacher taught fifth grade. Her name was Frank Weidler, F-R-A-N-C, Weidler. And she was an old maid school teacher. And she was tough, I'm telling you, you do something you shouldn't, get up there in front of the class and touch that crack and about the time you touch the crack on the floor you got it right across the back side <laughs> and there was and it, it's all she, she had no problems kids did what they were supposed to do then. but she was good but she we were too much for her in my class because she quit that next year <laughs> retired she yeah, but and then just east of that brick building was a cement black building where the Masonic Temple is now. That was the high school. <laughs> <laughs> and that burned, oh, must have been, I can't remember what year it was. It was in the 50s. And it burns to the ground. <laughs> but I had. Uh, again. Paul, can you tell us about that high school? You didn't go to that high school. No, I didn't go to that high school. Did that burn before you were ready for high school? No, 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 no. no. I was working at Perry's at that time in the fifties. I I was I was out of school thirty three. I graduated. So you never came to this school up here, did you? Yes, the old section. Okay, then I'm lost. When was that high school down there? When was that attended? The well, high school that, that used to be the Masonic Temple? It used to be. Uh, it, it burned right to the ground. They tore it right down. They built the Masonic Temple. It was okay. it was the Masonic Temple when it burned. But whoever went to that high school, what years was that? Oh, right up until... I think it's 26 or 27. They went oh, to. Oh, okay. So, kids I had, went there uh, after your brick school? My, uh, I had three brothers and two sisters. Well, one brother was younger than me. He didn't go there. And, uh, but my oldest brother, he graduated from there. And then my oldest sister, she never did get graduate because she went right into nursing. She was a nurse. She started that when she was a sophomore in high school. Okay, so let's ask you a question then. Um, actually, why don't you ask him if he could tell you about, uh, what are we gonna call that high school? It wasn't the Bloomingdale High School. What was no, it was Akron High School, AHS. 
ask him if he could tell you about the Akron High School. It wasn't centralized then. The Akron High School that was on John Street. They didn't centralize that until after I was out of school either. Okay, we need to get that on film because we don't have anything about that high school being down here. See, you're a wealth of information. We have to get it all on film. So, let me repeat this back to you. Ask about the Akron High School on John Street. Yeah. Just like former. Okay. Ask if he could tell us about that and um, if anybody in his family graduated from that. Wait until Mr. Williams tells you. <laughs> Could you tell me about the Akron High School on John Street? Oh, yes, it was right where the Masonic Temple is now, but it was closer to the sidewalk than the Masonic Temple. There was no parking lot in the front of it. It was a concrete block building, three stories high. Well, it was two stories and a half. And my oldest brother had, uh, had uh, graduated from there. And at that time, there was no gymnasium. And if they had to the basketball, they would have to go down where the guy sub shop is now. <laughs> and it had seats that they could fold up and take out. And that's where they played basketball. And they'd go down there and practice in the afternoon, then they'd have to put those seats all back in again so they could have a movie at night. So they build them. <laughs> or also stage play. That was the center of attraction in Akron at that time. All the social stuff. Even the school board, the school meetings where they elected the Board of Education took place in that. And. Uh, when they built the school up here on Bloomingdale, and for a few years before and after, my dad was clerk of the Board of Education. And if you went through the books, I bet you could find his, where he, he kept all the books himself. And everything had to come right out perfect, right to the penny, it would balance out. I've seen him look for two weeks for a penny. He'd find it, though, finally. He had a fourth grade education. That's all he had. <laughs> but uh, you just want to know about school. That's all he's, his different uh, schools. Did, you, did your family graduate? Did your um, family graduate? I had a brother who graduated from there. But the rest of us came up here and graduated. Yeah, from what year you graduated? What was your what year did you graduate? Nineteen thirty three. Then come back one year post graduate because you couldn't buy a job, so you get paid for one. And they're right in the middle of the depression. And I mean it was deep depression. You you could buy a Three pounds of hamburger for a quarter at that time. Wow. <laughs> That's a... what, your, what were your fondest memories of Akron? Oh. Wait, let's cut for a second. Ask him what was the Depression like. Tell him you want to know what his memories of the Depression were. Oh. <laughs> what, you, what were your um, memories of the Depression? What well, were you know, didn't have any money. That's for, that's for sure. You had to, ha and it didn't have any little leagues or anything like that. You had to make your own fun, and we had baseball games and that we choose up and, and take sides. And oh, we didn't have ice skates. Well, we had ice skates, but they were clamp on, and you would take about two strokes, and the skate come off. So <laughs> we, we used to play. Well, we used to call it shinny. It was, <laughs> it was like hockey, similar, and, but you played with a 
you'd find a rut that was bent. So you could use it for a hockey stick. And then you'd fight who could get a goal. Or a tin can, didn't have a ball. <laughs> Use the tin can all bent up. You get through playing, you had plenty of sh knocks on the knees and the shins before you got through. <laughs> we had fun, though. We had lots of fun. Did it in the wintertime. We, there used to be a, where Parkview Drive is, there was a hill that went down there. And it was like the bobsled run. And we had bobsleds, but not like the ones you see in the Olympics. <laughs> there was a board with a uh, sled on each end. You'd get five or six guys on it. <laughs> and you go around, and the first turn was a, a, almost a 90 degree angle turn. You'd go way up on the bank and go around that. Oh, I'm telling you, we used to have some, we'd ice it. And where was that, Paul? Right where you go down Parkview Drive, where that hill goes down to the bridge. Oh, yeah. Right down there by that house there. And then you go down there, and, and down in there was an old abandoned ga uh, gas well. And it was an old, probably a whole 70 feet wide. With water in it, and, you know, the, the gas would bubble out of it. We'd light it. And then it would, it would burn there for a while, and then it would all suck down in and go out. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a mill race down in there. It was a half, like a half moon. It must have been 50, 60 feet through it. And it was all laid up in stone. It must have been a cement mill down in there or something, or a kiln or something. And about, oh, maybe halfway through it, there was a hole in the roof where a few stones had fallen off. We'd build a fire under there, and the smoke would all go out the hole, and we'd get warm. <laughs> all down where Parkview Drive used to be? It was down around the, by the lake, where the lake is. They'd come right down that hill there. Well, they changed the hill a lot to before they, when they put the road in. There wasn't any road there. There was no Parkview Drive, no lake, no dam. It was just a gully. And that's where we used to do a lot of swimming, too, and down there in the Murder Creek in the Akron Falls. We used to swim there, too. Dive out of, out of the rocks about halfway up, but you had to know where you were going because there was different depths of water. <laughs> you had to hit the high spot. <laughs> and, oh Lord, I could go for hours if you wanted to go that long about stuff that was going on. When they, they had two railroads in town, did you know that? Well, you know where the bike path is? That was the railroad. It was called the West Shore Railroad. And then up on the other side of the park, uh, Skyline Drive was the one up to there, and that was the Peanut Railroad. It was both all New York Central. But, uh, oh, when I was at, oh, probably 8, 10, 11, along there, I used to, used to pedal papers in the morning. There was two papers, the Courier and the Express. There were two different papers, and then they combined. And they'd come out from uh, Buffalo on a train, a passenger, the, the commuter's train. That's what it was. They'd have one going towards Rochester, and the other one would come from Rochester. It, it, they'd meet just maybe a half hour difference. Uh, well, anyhow, I can remember peddling papers the day that Harding died, and they had headlines that high. Harding dies on it. <laughs> Captain who Harding was. Yeah. Who was yeah. Hardy? Harding was the president of the United States. He died. He he died. Uh, I think it was 21, 22, I'm in there. 21, 22. 
<laughs> yeah, we used to, and then I'd peddle papers in the morning, and I had to get done in time so I could get up to school. Oh, yeah, and uh, in talking about schools, they had a bell. They'd, they'd ring that bell, say, I can't remember the exact times, but 8 o'clock, and then that was a warning bell, and by 8.30 they'd ring it again, you better be in your seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a lot went on. They used to have what that I can remember seeing it, but I never was in it. it uh, the juniors and the seniors, boys, they'd have a battle over a, a, t a flag. Well, the seniors would put it someplace, and the juniors would try to get it. Oh, boys, talk about fights. <laughs> Not vicious in fights, anything, but they would try to scramble to get that flag. <laughs> they had it up here, and, and one fellow, well, of course, it was the old gymnasium where the cafeteria is now. It was the gym, where the gym and the auditorium all in one. And uh, where the kitchen is, that's where the the basketball the gym was. And, and where the you sit, that was the auditorium. And they had a balcony in it. I don't know if you noticed those doors upstairs. There was three doors, two doors upstairs and three down, where they could go into the auditorium. Where you go in to eat, well, that was the auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> and they had folding doors. They'd uh, fold them way back, and you'd sit in the auditorium and watch the basketball game up on the. <laughs> Boys locker room on one end, girls locker room on the other. Let's cut for a second. Paul, how about stores, old stores downtown, like the cookie jar? Do you have a memory of the, that bakery? Who? One of the businesses on Main Street when you were a little boy. Well, we'll start where the fire hall is. There was a saloon there, it was Altenburg's. And then up where Right next to the Aquin house, there was a, a livery stable there. It was a big house, and the livery stable was down behind it. And then, of course, there was the, where the Aquin house is, that was the American Hotel. What was the livery stable? What did they do in there? The livery, oh, that's where they rented horses out, and horse and carriages. Oh. They'd have them, and they'd rent them out like a, rent cars today. <laughs> That's true. I tell you a story about a doctor that my da that my mother told me. There was a doctor. I, I think his name was McPherson, but I'm not positive about that. You know, of course they had horse and buggies. <laughs> and he'd come down Main Street like crazy with that horse and out Buell Street. <laughs> he'd get up there and he'd go and sleep under a tree. He said, people think I'm busy with the horses that go for my hurry in. <laughs> that's, that's just one of the stories. <laughs> and, well, in the next place up, well, actually that was, was the where the fire hall was at that time. Uh, oh, you they, can put your hand down. And uh, when they, the first fire truck they had, it was a big old Stutz. It was made, I think, by Ward La France. And when they demonstrated, it was on a, an American La France. That's what it was. It, they demonstrated it before they bought the truck. They bought, had that truck, and it was right up by the park. And they were pumping water right over the top of the flagpole with it. Oh, that was something. I'm telling you, that's that. and that was at 8 o'clock, early in the morning. I, mean, I would just get through peddling papers. 
So they were going down to demonstrate it, down to where, well, we call it the first jeep. A certain teed used to be the first, where the soccer place is, down there in Bloomingdale. It is now. That's where the soccer place is now. Uh, that's the old board plan. But uh, they were going demonstrating. I went down there. Oh, boy, did I get it when I got home because I missed school. <laughs> but anyhow, and then, uh, then it was the candy kitchen, the John Panty Cakes. Oh, and he had delicious candy. <laughs> and uh, then it was a drug uh, furniture store where part of the library is. The new library or the Daniel Library? The old new library where part of the new library oh. was on it. See, there was two stores they tore down to build that new library. And the one of them was a furniture store. Uh -huh. And the next store up was a plumber and hardware. Uh, John Betzel ran it. And then the next place up was a bakery. Uh, Koval. I don't know if you know, ever heard of Holly Koval, the builder, his grandfather. <laughs> and uh, and then there was a Chubby Handy's barber shop was in where the beauty parlor is there. <laughs> and then the next place was a uh, oh a general store. And they had a unique system there. You'd pay your money and you'd. They'd, if you got to give them too much, they'd put it in a little rig and they had there, and it was all on wires. They'd send it up to the office, and they'd make the change and send it back. Well, <laughs> 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 the next store was A and P store. What's there now? Uh, it's part of the insurance outfit, Fred Thomas's. The right hand, well, as you're looking at the store, it's on the right hand side. Then the next place was Ed Stabell's Meat Market. And then comes Ackerson in Hoey Hardware Store. Her grandfather, wasn't it? Great, great. I.D. Ackerson? Great, great. Great, great grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> I.D. Ackerson. And Crawford, they ran that, and they had a something to do with a gas company too. Right down there, and then where the Chamber of Commerce built uh, offices now was a tailor shop. The next place where Al Basnello is is was a barber shop with Gene Havens, and his son, whose name was Rensselaer, or Butch, he's one of the guys, first flyers around, around here. He used to land up here in Five Corners and take you for a ride. <laughs> but, uh, and then let's see, next one was a Larkin store, and then there was a market basket store, and there's Rob, Bob Robinson's was uh, men's furnishings. And then there was Hilligus Drugstore, later Stone's Drugstore. And the next place uh, was Carl Gifford. He was a, had furniture and he's an undertaker. And I don't know what all. <laughs> that was the first, he had the first elevator and it was in Akron. <laughs> How many furniture places were in Akron? Oh, well, I don't know, probably. It couldn't have been over two or three. What there used to be in Akron was a, was a lot of blacksmith shops. <laughs> well, let's see now then. Uh, then there was a store in there. 
an old maid ran a ladies' furnishings. Lily Wolf, her name was. And uh, what was that? Gosh, I, I didn't think I'd ever forget who was that. Oh, Henry Egan. Oh. Hank Egan. He was, uh, he lived in the corner of, of uh, Park View in Maine in that big house on the corner, right across Park View from the, from the octagon. Uh, from the octagon, yeah. And across Kitty Red Cross was the Catholic Church. Uh, and then there was a, Ed Buckley, he had a store where the good and plenty is. That was a general store. And one of the people that lived there, uh, that worked for him, just died. It was that Mrs. Roloff. Really? She, she worked for him. He had the best cheese in Western New York. Oh man, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> then there was Mills Jewelry Store, where the uh, nationwide Insurance is, and then the next one was where the delicatessen is, it was uh, a man by the name of Bert Hitchcock, and <coughs> that, he had all kinds of school supplies, penny candies, magazines, <laughs> whatever, like that, that you couldn't buy any place else, and uh, he also was a distributor for the newspapers, morning and evening papers. They all come from Buffalo. It was the Times and the Buffalo Evening News was at night, and then the Courier and Express were in the morning. <laughs> and you get them all, they all come out on the train. They didn't, didn't have many buses. The buses didn't come till later. <laughs> and uh, oh, so oh, then it was Billy Gross. He had a a bakery in there, where that empty building is now, right next to the delicatessen. There used to be a beauty parlor there. Was that the cookie jar later? Uh, it could have been. It could, uh, or uh, later on down where your great grandfather was was a, a restaurant, a tea room they used to call it. <laughs> it was a restaurant, <laughs> they, and what was the name of that restaurant? Ah, uh, I can't remember that. I can't remember that. Mrs. Webster, and I think Mrs. Paxson was in on that too. And let's see, then up. Up beyond Billy Gross's was a shoe shop, a repair, shoe repair, and a, on one side, and a, another a plumber was in there on the other side. And then the next place was where Mike George's store used to be, or where the liquor store is now. Half of that was, oh, I had seeds and general groceries and stuff like that. And then he later built that building, the concrete block building, right at the end of the sub shop, right next to the alley down there on Clinton Street. His name was Townsend, Sanford Townsend. And the next place, uh, which is a bag and barrel, now, on the right side, when I was a kid, there was a, a doctor in there, Doc Pringle. Then the next place was Sherwood's, and that was that side of Main Street. What was Sherwood's? <laughs> what was Sherwood's? Sherwood's a hardware store. He had. Seal buckets, 
hanging on hooks all over the roof. And the man and this little boy come in. And the little boy said, geez, Dad, that roof must leak awful bad. <laughs> <laughs> he thought the guy was roughly because he had his pails hanging up there. Was Nick's Deli still there? No, no, Nick's Deli didn't come until after World War II. <laughs> there were a lot of stores in there before Nick's Deli. Nick, well, I, Nick, you mean uh, the Park Deli down on Main Street? On Main Street, you mean? No, no, Nick's Deli. Like after no, oh, the you know, oh, that, that, that when that I store. was a kid, that was Charlie Howard's grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... But a lot of things went on in this town. There was a little bit, but boy, there was stuff going on all the time. <laughs> and the other side of the street, there was a... Uh, over the doctor's offices, you know, that was a a Wells house, they call it. And it, the story is, and I don't know how true this is, that was where Wells, a uh, Wells Fargo, got its start. Which building at this point? Where the health center is there. Okay, Shanti Rajendran's building. Yeah, and then it was a garage, a machine shop, run by the Martin brothers, and then the, they built a new building where, right on the corner of a mechanic in the main there, where the eye man is, the glasses the guy who makes glasses. He, but that building was a machine shop too, a beginning. And, and then on the corner, there was a, a double building. It uh, had a restaurant on one side and a print shop uh, on the other side. And they printed the Akron Journal. <laughs> there was two newspapers in town then, the Akron News and the Akron Journal. And, and next to that was Flint and Ackerson, not Ackerson, Ackerson. <laughs> what did Flint and Ackerson do? Pardon? What did they run? Chevrolet Agency. You've seen pictures of that. Is that where Whistler's is now? Yeah. And a guy by the name of Flint built that building where they are. Upstairs there was a miniature golf course. We used to play miniature golf up there. <laughs> 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 then uh, where the pizza shop is is the bowling alleys. Then where Freeman is, the sports shop, that was the Bank of Akron. Which pizzeria was it in the bowling alley? Tony's Pizzeria? Where, where, where that is now was the bowling alley. There wasn't any <laughs> pizzerias. It didn't have pizza. And then no uh, uh, up, up beyond the bank, oh, was uh, where the filling station is. That was always a saloon. And right on the corner, there was a little square building where French stage had an insurance, real estate business and American Railway Express Agency because uh, a lot of stuff came in by on the train and they take it up to the express office and go there and pick it up. And then uh, where the bank is, there's that other building which they used to call it Ellicott Square. <laughs> That's where my dad worked. <laughs> <laughs> Where the Bank of Akron is now? Yeah. And what, what was in that building? Well, that was the insurance agency and express agency and real estate. Oh, they <laughs> called it Ellicott Square? They just called it Ellicott Square. It was a, it was a gag. 
Could, after the, well, the Ellicott Square in Buffalo was quite the building at that time. <laughs> this is a little dumpy old building. <laughs> and, and across the corner was another restaurant. And I'm not too sure what else was in there. Uh, but when I was a teenager, there, there was a, they had pool tables in there and an ice cream parlor. Was that the Frojoy? Yeah, it was Frojoy, yeah. Okay. It was Mazda's run on it. Yep. And, and then the next place up was a Ford agency. Peterson's run that. John Peterson, his son Bill, ran it for years. And then beyond that was a paint store and uh, Undertaker, uh, Jim Shad. And, and, and part of that building, and, and the other half was the post office. There was a big window in between the two of you. You lift from the post office into the paint store, or vice versa. <laughs> and then the next place where that, well, it's a restaurant that's empty, there was a house in there. That house now is down on uh, Pearl Street. Whose house was it? I do, oh, Mark Bates. Mark Bates had it moved down there. And then they built that restaurant in there. And Mark Bates ran a meat market right where the computer store is. On Main Street, on the yeah, left on, side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the next building where all state insurance is, now Theater Stapleton built an ice cream parlor and Oh, we had cameras and a whole lot of different things in this store. You could go from there right into the th movie theater from the back. <laughs> what was his store called? The Oasis. The Oasis. Yeah. That was a hangout for the teenagers. <laughs> and, uh, and the next place, of course, on the corner by the park was Burghorn's Nodding's Drugstore. Peterson's when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're going to Nottings. Do you remember uh, Tony Berghorn? It was her grandfather. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you who it was. He was Ted Stapes' grandfather. Berghorn was? Yeah. Mrs. Stapleton was Joe Berghorn's sister. She was a Berghorn. And the, the apartments out in there, you could go right from one to the other. <laughs> it was all family. <laughs> in the park, of course, and then there was no post office then. See, that, that post office was a WPA project to fight the uh, depression. You know, they do a lot of stuff. When they built the bridge in the park, too. Yeah, they built, they started the park, too. Anything else? The post office and the park were WPA? Oh. I don't know if we had anything else or not. In the WPA, you could work three days a week, that's all. You got five dollars a day. Okay, let's 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 um, round it up, actually. Would you like to say anything else about Akron? What do you think of Akron now? Oh, it's fantastic. There isn't a better town around. At least we, at least I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> the news today, East Aurora isn't too good. <laughs> yeah. There's a, lots of room for progress, though. There always will be. You can always think somebody will always have ideas which would be done and do differently. One thing I'll tell you about Akron that happened 
they had this typhoid epidemic. And they built the school. They put sewers in. They put a new water system all within five years. And they're all paid for. Now, <laughs> oh, it's well, thanks for coming, and I really enjoyed learning about your history of your Akron. Well, thank you. And nice <laughs> meeting you. <laughs> Maybe we'll see you again. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>